in the previous video we saw the northwest corner rule for establishing an initial feasible solution for transportation model in this video we'll look at another alternative method which is the least cost method for establishing an initial feasible solution for the transportation model so on your screen you can see the transportation table which we had created as part of step 1 for solving the transportation model abc are the plants or the origins of the supply p q r and s are the distribution centers and these numbers in these squares are the cost of transporting from each plant to each distribution center on the extreme right you can see the supply for each of the plant so this is a maximum supply capacity for each of the plant is listed here in blue and at the bottom you can see the demand at each of the distribution centers and the total of the demand and the supply is the same which is 17 units now in the least cost method step one is to evaluate the transportation cost and select the square with the lowest cost and in case there is a tie make an arbitrary selection so step one is to evaluate the transportation cost and select the square with the lowest cost and in case of a tie make an arbitrary selection so in this transportation table the square with the lowest cost is bq which has a cost of zero now step two says that depending upon the supply and demand condition allocate the maximum possible units to the square having the lowest cost so depending upon the supply and demand condition allocate the maximum possible units to the square having the lowest cost so for the square bq let us evaluate the supply and demand condition so the distribution center q has a demand of five units but the plant B can supply only one unit. So definitely the allocation cannot be more than one as you can't ship more than one units to the warehouse Q from plant B. So here we'll allocate one to the square BQ. So with this allocation now the remaining supply capacity for plant B is reduced by 1 and it becomes 0 and the demand for distribution center Q has also reduced by 1 so now it becomes 4 now step number 3 says delete the row or column or both satisfied by the allocation So delete the row or column 
or both satisfied by the allocation. So in this case, the allocation for B has been completed because there is no more supply left for B to transport to any other distribution center. However, the demand for Q has not been completely satisfied. So it still has an unfulfilled demand of four units. So we'll cross off the squares for plant B indicating that no more allocation can be done here. Now step four says that repeat steps one, two and three for the reduced transportation table until all supply and demand conditions are satisfied. So repeat steps one, two and three for the reduced transportation table until all supply and demand conditions are satisfied. So here now we have the reduced transportation table and now we'll again go to step one which is to evaluate the transportation cost and select the square with the lowest cost. So from the remaining squares the lowest cost is for square AP. Now the second step says, depending upon the supply and demand condition, allocate the maximum possible units to the square having the lowest cost. So for AP, the supply available is six units, whereas the demand is seven units. So the maximum allocation will be six units because you can't supply more than six units, even though P has a demand of seven units. So we'll allocate six here to AP. Now with this allocation, the supply capacity available for A now becomes zero because A is supplying its entire supply to distribution center P. And the demand for Q has been satisfied by six units. So the remaining demand, which is unsatisfied is one unit. Now step number three says delete the row or column or both satisfied by the allocation. So here for plant A, the supply has been completely allocated. Whereas for P, the demand has not been completely satisfied. So A cannot supply to any other distribution centers other than P. So we'll cross off the remaining boxes here. Now again, we'll go to step one. So evaluate the transportation cost and select the square with the lowest cost. So now from the remaining squares, the square with the lowest cost is CP. So step two, depending upon the supply and demand condition, allocate the maximum possible units to the square having the lowest cost. So for CP, the supply available is 10 units, whereas the demand is one unit. So we'll allocate one unit here. So now with this allocation, the demand at P becomes zero. Now the next step is delete the row or column or both satisfied by the allocation. So of course the plant C has not yet completely been allocated. Whereas the distribution center P has been completely allocated. So we already have the squares for distribution center P either already allocated or crossed off. Also with this allocation of one unit for CP, the supply reduces by one unit. So it becomes nine units for plant C. Now again, we'll evaluate the transportation cost for the reduced matrix. 
and find out the square with the lowest cost. So square CQ has the lowest cost now. Now the supply available for plant C is 9 units whereas the demand for Q is 4 units. So we can allocate 4 units here. This is because even though C can supply 9 units, the demand at Q is only 4 units. So you definitely don't want to transport more than 4 units to Q. So now with this allocation, the supply availability for plant C reduces by 4 units. So the supply available now is 5 units, which is 9 minus 4. Also, the demand at Q was 4 units which has now completely been satisfied so the demand remaining is 0. Now step 3 says delete the row or column or both satisfied by the allocation so either we have already crossed off the boxes for distribution center Q or we have already allocated supply to them. So now let's move to step 1 again so evaluate the transportation cost and the lowest cost square is CS. Now S has a demand of 2 units and C has a supply of 5 units so we can allocate 2 units here. So with this allocation the supply at C reduces by 2 units so now it is 3 and the demand at S also reduces by 2 units so the remaining demand is 0. Now step 3 is delete the row or column so we already have either crossed off the boxes or allocated for distribution center S and now the last box available which is unallocated is CR so the demand is 3 and supply available is 3 so we will allocate 3 units here and with this allocation the supply becomes 0 and the demand at R also becomes 0. So with this we have already allocated all the supply and demand. So this is our initial feasible solution using the least cost method. Now let us evaluate the total transportation cost using this method in this case. So we have shipments which is from and then we have units shipped then we have transportation cost per unit and then we have the total cost So the first allocation was from A to P for 6 units with a transportation cost of 200 rupees per unit. So the total is 6 multiplied by 2 is 12. Next allocation is B to Q for 1 unit with the transportation cost per unit of 0 so total cost is 0 the next allocation is C to P for 1 unit with a cost of 5 so total is 5 the next is C to Q for 4 units with a cost of 8 so 8 fourths are 32 The next allocation is from C to R for 3 units at a unit cost of 15, 15 threes are 45. The next is C to S for 2 units at a unit cost of 9, so 9 twos are 18. So 8 plus 2 is 10. And 5 plus 5 is 10, so 10 plus 10 is 20, plus 2, 22, so 2 and 2 carry over, 2 plus 1, 3, plus 3, 6, plus 4, 10, plus 1, 11. 
So the total cost is equal to 112. However, this unit cost is in hundreds of rupees. So we multiply this by 100 and the total cost comes out to be 11,200 rupees. Now, a point to be noted here is that using the northwest corner rule for the same example, we had obtained the total transportation cost as 11,600 rupees. And using the least cost method, we have obtained a total cost of 11,200 rupees which is a saving of 400 rupees over the northwest corner rule.